It's finally time to open the last of my Christmas presents. My fiance bought me this for Christmas. She's very thoughtful, always picks something up for the workshop or some tools for Christmases and birthdays. And I'm finally getting around to installing this in mid-February. So that's how far behind I am. So this is the AL310 power feed, Wending power feed. Unless you read the other side of the box, in which case it's the Model 260. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. It runs at 0 to 200 RPM. 450 inch pounds of torque and the feed rate on my mill would be at maximum 40 inches per minute. And this is what comes in the box. The unit itself, obviously. The limit switch, which is attached to the power feed. A cap for your limit switch. Mounting plate, bevel gear. We'll have a look at that. Limit stops. And a bag with some shims, bolts, a P-clip cable ties in there for keeping your cables hat tidy and speaking of cables it comes with a two pin plug so I've fitted a British standard plug on there but it does come with a two pin so be aware of that even though it's sold as a UK model. The stickers and labels are definitely a Friday afternoon job but the switches feel like good quality. The speed adjustment knob is a little rough but we can clean that up and the forward off reverse lever has a nice positive engagement. Assembly may be fairly straightforward if you're replacing a servo style power feed. This isn't the case on my Enduma mill with insulation throwing up two problems. The first is that this end plate is not compatible with my milling machine table. The whole pattern is different though. This is supposed to be the same as the bridge port. To remedy this and bearing in mind that this is a wedge plate so it isn't solid all the way through, we're going to mill out the two bottom holes on the end plate to give us just a little bit more clearance for our bolts. The result might seem a little agricultural, but the plate is now held to the table quite securely. The second problem is that the original power feed shaft from this mill is not going to fit the new power feed. So I've turned down a shaft here, you can see at the back, there's a 20mm diameter at the back here, and that slots into an adapter on the lead screw, it's then pinned through, a collar, and that prevents the shaft from sliding through the bearing, the bearing sleeve here. There's a little shoulder here, I'll explain that in a little bit, but that replaces the shims that you would otherwise need to space the bevel gear here from the bearing or, you know, along the shaft a little. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. There's also a keyway because our bevel gear is keyed. And then a small hole here which accommodates this pin. And that pin holds on the hand wheel that you can see here. There's also a sleeve. And that goes on the inside diameter here, because there is a disparity between the shaft size, which is 16mm, and the ID of the hand wheel, which from memory I think is 22 It's not really important. And that just slots on like that. And there's clearance for that pin to go through. And yes, the pin could potentially move, so the whole hand wheel could move in or out, but we can shim that out if necessary. There's also a screw that holds the sleeve on. But that sleeve actually does more than just holding on the hand wheel. The sleeve actually holds on our bevel gear. The important thing about the bevel gear is that it needs to be a set distance from the bearing here. You want a certain amount of backlash. I can't remember off the top of my head what that is. I think something like two degrees. If you go to the servo website and look for the model that they sell that this is a clone of, there'll be a manual. And in that it will tell you what the backlash for your bevel gear needs to be and how to set it. And seeing it's fairly easy, you just have two pen marks and you stack your shims in here until it moves a certain amount. So I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. I'm sure it was about two degrees, one or two degrees. But what I did was machine that into the shaft. So if I flick the switch forward, that locks, so it locks, it engages the drivetrain with the little bevel gear that's at the top here. And you can see that is about the backlash that you want. I will see if I can try and find a link to that manual and put it in the description. With the power feed mounted to the shaft, there are four M6 bolts to install 
which secure the power feed to the plate. Now we can install our bevel gear, slide that onto the shaft over the key, and pop some grease on there before we close things up. Then the collar, and the bolt to secure it. And finally the hand wheel. And with that, our power feed installation is almost finished, but we still need to mount the limit switch and the stops. I've drilled and tapped a pair of M8 holes in the saddle for our limit switch. You kind of want the switches, I suppose, to be about in line with that T-slot at the front of the table, because that's where our limit switch stops are going to go. In our case, that's one right at the far end on the right-hand side. And if we switch our power feed on, we can run it to the limit on the left as well. last major part to fit is the limit switch cap and it comes with these two springs. It is easier to do this before you install the switch, but we're going to do it on the machine. Inside here there are two retainers, one at each end of the cap, that hold the springs in place, kind of, and they fit over the switches themselves. So we pop one in, this was fiddly off the machine. <laughs> It's not going to be any easier on it. There we go. And we can test that out. Perfect. Now is a good time to check our actual feed rate. I've marked two positions on the mill table and one on the saddle, and I'm timing how long it takes for the table to travel a four inch distance. Of course, if you have a DRO, you can always just use that. And here are the measurements I've taken. Uh, minimum running speed is 1.137 inches per minute, and maximum is 24 inches per minute, with the rapid traverse being 40 inches per minute as indicated by the spec. So at some point what I'll do is remove the supplied faceplate from the power feed and fit a custom one with graduations according to our measurements. Well, that wasn't such a chore now, was it? And if you're doing a straight replacement, it should be even easier. If not, and you do need to make up your own shaft, like I have, I've got the test shaft that I made here. Don't try to be clever and bring that shoulder out to replace the shims. I did that, I ended up having to take the whole lot apart and take a little bit more off of here because it didn't quite line up where I expected it to. It was a neat idea, but it doesn't work so well in practice. In terms of build quality, the whole unit feels quite robust. The bevel gear is a little delicate, so don't drop it or you will damage the teeth. Um, and I'm thinking of changing out the power and limit switch cabling because the power cable's too short, uh, far short than I'd like, and the length to the limit switch is way too long. For the moment, I've used a self-adhesive cable tie pad to secure the slack to the rear of the power feed. Uh, if or when I do, I'll take it apart and we'll get a look inside. The mounting plate looks like cast aluminium and feels pretty strong. It's a shame it didn't fit out of the box, but that's not the manufacturer's fault. Um, and it was easy enough to mod modify. I'd have liked to have seen a better selection of hardware, to be honest. There are only two of these bolts that you use to mount the power feed to the mounting plate. There's a little one for this P-clip. A couple more cable ties, a couple more clips, a bit more length on the cable from the power feed to the wall. Yeah, there's a great selection of shims in there. I didn't use any of them because I turned down that shaft in the end to just the right dimension. But pretty few cents we should use these. So that's really my only complaint, is just that what comes in this bag is completely inadequate. And I've looked at a few of these models on Amazon, which is where this one came from. And it looks like they all come with the same hardware. So just bear in mind that you're going to want some M6 bolts and you want some M8s or M10s for your limit switch. It's a shame that's not supplied, especially 
seeing as they're, they're pennies, but you know, it wasn't an expensive power feed. It was only, I think, 120, 130 quid. There is one on Amazon right now for 100. It looks like it's the same model. I mean, it's not the same listing. Uh, I would have put a link to that, but it has since been deleted. So I would imagine that they're all fairly similar, but don't take my word for it. Just, you know, be careful what you buy. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the unit. Not only is it going to save a lot of effort, but hopefully it'll improve the finish of the mill pieces that I make. Speaking of which, I didn't think I was going to end the video without actually trying this thing out. Or you skipped ahead and realised that I was absolutely going to do that. So, this is the exciting bit. We're going to go and try it out now. I'm so looking forward to this. And there we have it. The test bar came out really quite nicely. Not a perfect mirror finish, but for four beaten up inserts, I think it's okay. Not quite as dramatic an improvement in finish as I expected, but much less effort, and the power feed performed perfectly. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to get around to answering them. And I'll be back in the next one where we'll be continuing our VFD installation.